Hey guys, welcome back to Med with May Simple. In this video, we're gonna see about macro lights. Before starting to watch this video, please set your video qualities to 480p or above to get the most out of my video. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. So, there are various drug groups which inhibit the protein synthesis in bacteria, and that includes tetracyclines, macrolides. Glindamycin, streptogramins, chloramphenicol, oxazolidinones, and aminoglycosides. Of these, the drugs which are underlined are super important, and the drugs which are presented in red color are fairly important, and the drugs which are in black color are fair to know. So, in this video, we're going to see about macrolides. Macrolides basically includes drugs such as erythromycin, clarithromycin, azithromycin, and it also includes a drug group known as ketolides, which includes telithromycin. Of these, the prototypic drug is erythromycin. Erythromycin is a bacteriostatic drug, which means erythromycin inhibits the growth and division of bacteria rather than killing the bacteria. It, its mechanism of action is that it inhibits the protein synthesis in bacteria. It does that by binding to the 50 subunit in the ribosomes of bacteria. As you all know, there are two subunits in bacterial uh, ribosomes. That includes 50 subunit and 30 subunit. So erythromycin binds to the 50 subunit in the ribosomes of bacteria, and by doing so, it inhibits protein synthesis. And that's how all the macrolides act. Now let's see about the pharmacokinetics part of erythromycin. The most important fact you need to know regarding um, macrolides is that they are destroyed by gastric acid and they are interfered by food in the stomach. So how do you apply this clinically is that if you are gonna um, take macrolides in uh, during food uh, that may interfere with the with the absorption of macrolides so they also they're also degraded or destroyed by gastric acid so in order to overcome that these drugs are formulated in enteric coated forms which means these drugs can safely cross the gastric acid and they can reach the intestine and from that they can be slowly released and this will help to overcome the um, destructive effect by gastric acid. And there is one more solution for that. That solution is um, these drugs are available in steroids and esters formulation and these are fairly acid stable. So two things you need to know here is um, erythromycin is available in entry coated form and they, the other formulations of uh, erythromycin are steroids and esters which are fairly acid stable. Now the half life of erythromycin is about 1.5 hours, it is very less so multiple dosage per day is required. This is about erythromycin alright. So the large amounts of the drug erythromycin is secreted in bile and excreted in feces and only 5% of the drug is excreted by the kidney in urine. So dose adjustment is not required in renal insufficiency patients. This drug enters neutrophils and macrophages and it can act within the cells. So you know few organisms which are intracellular. This drug can be helpful in those infections. And this also can cross placenta. So you need to be aware when giving these drugs to a pregnant woman as this can reach the fetus. The uses of erythromycin are diphtheria, chlamydia, pertussis, and community acquired pneumonia. However, erythromycin is now not so used commonly drug because there are better options available which are better than erythromycin. Now let's see about the resistance part of erythromycin. There are three main mechanisms by which the bacteria can exhibit resistance to um, erythromycin. The first mechanism is by reduced permeability or increased deflex. Second mechanism is by production of esterases. The third mechanism is by ribosomal protection. The first mechanism is so simple to understand. The bacteria either prevents the macrolides from entering inside 
or they will develop efflux pumps with which they pump the macrolides out of the bacteria. The second one is by production of enzymes known as esterases and this is very common in a specific bacterial family known as Enterobacteriaceae. The third mechanism is ribosomal protection. This is by um, production of certain enzymes known as methylases and some other enzymes and by doing so the bacteria protects itself and uh, protects its own ribosomes from the macrolides and these three are the main mechanisms by which macrolides are the, uh, the bacteria develop resistance to macrolides. Now there, there is also a um, feature known as cross resistance between erythromycin and other macrolides. Now what does that what does this mean? So if a bacteria is resistant to erythromycin, it is also resistant to all other macrolides such as azithromycin, clarithromycin, and telithromycin. So this is known as cross resistance. And there is also cross resistance between macrolides and clindamycin and streptogramins. Although these are unrelated antibiotics, there is cross resistance between these drugs too. And there is a syndrome known as MLS syndrome which is known as macro, mac, macrolides, lincosmide and streptogramins resistant syndrome. This is because these three uh, antibiotics have a common side so this is the reason for the cross resistance in all these three antibiotic groups. The adverse drug reactions are anorexia, nausea, vomiting and diarrhea. These may seem, seem very simple but in case of erythromycin these can be very severe and discomforting for the patient. And the second point is there is increased GI distress. This is because they act directly on the gut wall and increase the intestine motility. And this is one of a very important reason for, for non-compliance in the patients. And as usual there is um, hypersensitivity in few patients and the features can be fever, rash, eosinophilia and other hypersensitivity features. Now let's see about clarithromycin. Clarithromycin is a semisynthetic macrolide which is derived from erythromycin. It's got the same mechanism of action as erythromycin which is binding to the 50th subunit of bacterial ribosome and inhibiting protein synthesis. It has got more antibiotic spec spectrum compared to erythromycin. It is active against Mycobacterium avium complex. It's also active against Toxoplasma gondii, which is a parasite, and it's got activity against Haemophilus influenzae and Mycobacterium leprae, which causes leprosy. The pharmacokinetic features of Clarithromycin It's got a half life of 6 hours compared to the half life of Erythromycin, which is 1.5 hours. So, due to longer half life, this drug can be given. A just twice daily dosage okay so it is metabolized mainly in liver but in the case of clarithromycin dose reduction is required in renal insufficiency patients this is not like erythromycin erythromycin doesn't require any dose reduction in renal insufficiency but clarithromycin requires dose reduction in renal insufficiency the advantages of clarithromycin over erythromycin is very simple it is that it is better tolerated by the patients than erythromycin because it has got very lesser side effects in the gastrointestinal tract such as anorexia, vomiting, diarrhea, all those are already less with clarithromycin compared to erythromycin and less frequent dosing is adequate. This is because of longer half-life. The half-life of clarithromycin which is 6 hours so only twice daily dosing is adequate but in erythromycin the half-life is only 1.5 hours so you need to give multiple doses per day. Now let's see about azithromycin. Even azithromycin has got the same mechanism of action as clarithromycin and erythromycin and it's got the same antibiotic spectrum but uh, it has got some improved activity against chlamydia. Pharmacokinetics part of azithromycin is that it's got a half-life of about 3 days or 3 to 4 days. This is because of production of active metabolites of azithromycin in the body and this active metabolite will be active in the body for about 4 days and this is responsible for the longer half-life of azithromycin. So once daily dosing is sufficient 
with the case of azithromycin. So this is better compared to even clarithromycin which required twice daily dosing. So this drug is given one hour before or two hours after the food and this is because gastric acid inactivates the macrolides. This is the point which I told you earlier and already we have seen uh, two solutions already for this. One was um, giving these tablets in entry coated format to overcome the gastric acid activity. The other was giving them in specialized formulations such as steroids and esterates, esters. And now we are seeing one more solution for that. We can give this drug one hour before or two hours after the food and this can be helpful to overcome the gastric acid activity. There are various uses of azithromycin of which I have mentioned only two in this slide. So it can be used in chlamydia infections such as chlamydial cervicitis or chlamydial urethritis and it can be used in community acquired pneumonia. In the case of uh, chlamydia, chlamydial infection, a single dose of azithromycin is sufficient to treat the infection but if you are going to treat the same infection with doxycycline which is a tetracycline you need to give a 7 days or 1 week course. Community acquired pneumonia uh, can be treated with azithromycin for a, with a 5 day course starting with, uh, um, starting with a 400 milligram loading dose followed by a 500 milligram loading dose followed by 250 milligram once daily for 4 days for the next 4 days so it's a total of 5 days treatment of community acquired pneumonia with azithromycin. The ketolites include telithromycin so these are also semi-synthetic macrolides. Telithromycin is derived from erythromycin. A clinidose sugar group in erythromycin is replaced by a keto group to produce telithromycin. So this has got more spectrum of activity compared to the previously described macrolides. The pharmacokinetics part of telithromycin is that it has got a longer half-life so once daily dosage is sufficient. This is similar to the azithromycin and it is also metabolized in liver. In United States of America, um, telithromycin is approved for use only in community acquired pneumonia. The adverse drug reactions of telithromycin are hepatitis, liver failure and it can also precipitate arrhythmias. Telithromycin is contraindicated in mild respiratory tract infections or any other mild infections because the adverse drug reactions such as hepatitis, arrhythmias, liver failure are so severe so it's better to use some other safer antibiotics for these milder infections rather than taking risk to treat that mild infection with a dangerous or a drug with severe side effects such as telithromycin. It is also contraindicated in a condition known as myasthenia gravis because telithromycin can aggravate um, the condition in myasthenia gravis. So telithromycin is contraindicated in these conditions. That's it for today. If you like this video, please help me make more videos by donating me through patreon.com slash simple and leave a like for this video and tell me your suggestions in the comment section below and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon for more videos. Thank you.